All right, I'm, I'm starting over. Okay, hi everybody. My name's Don Hutchins. I'm the owner of Veggie Cooking and I have Chef Jazz with me, which I'm gonna turn it over to her in just a second. Um, but Chef Jazz is a private chef and she's a traveling chef with seven years of experience. So she's a double major graduate from Johnson & Wales University, which Johnson & Wales University is the largest food service educator in the entire world. Um, she has a degree in both culinary arts and food and beverage service management. And so she's done events with Garth Brooks, the Players Championship, NASCAR, um, oh my gosh, what am I missing? The Masters. Um, she can be heard on the podcast, Course for Life, where she's interviewed about her culinary experiences, and she's going to share some of those with us today as well. And she's also been on a segment in First Coast, Jacksonville's First Coast Living. And so you can find more about her on Instagram under Chef Jazz, and that's J-A-Z-12, and then on Facebook under Jazz Moore. So it's J-A-Z-M-O-O-R-E. So I am about to turn this over to Chef Jazz, and I have, I'm going to make her a co-host really quick, and then I am going to turn her video on. All right, so let's see. Here we go. There we go. Hello, Chef Jazz. You are on. Hi, everyone. Oh my gosh, I am so, so excited that today is finally here. Of course, we are getting ready to prepare the plant-based barbecue pizza. So if you all are ready, I'm ready. This is my assistant, Michaela. How old are you, Michaela? Nine. She is nine years old. So what grade are you in? Fourth grade. She's in fourth grade. And tell me one last thing. Do you love to cook? Yes. All right, so let's get this party started. So I figured that the first thing we should do is get our sauce going, our plant-based barbecue sauce. So let's grab our tomato paste, our can opener, and let's start opening that up. Oh, and also, before I forget, as you're opening that up, um, one of the things Chef Jazz mentioned was she is going to do an activity while you guys are waiting for your pizza to cook. So she wants you to just get a piece of paper, just a plain piece of paper. So if your mom or somebody around could just find a plain piece of paper while the pizza is cooking, she is going to be able to show you how to do a really fun activity called origami. So I'm going to turn it back over to her again because I had forgot to mention that. And she is working on opening that can up. <laughs> Yeah, so as far as the frog origamis, it could be printer paper, it could be notebook paper, it could be the construction paper. So pretty much whatever you have available. So if everyone has their tomato paste open, go ahead and grab your saucepan, and we're just gonna dump that right in there. And what size uh, tomato paste can is that? This is just a six ounce can. Okay. And all we need is just this one. Okay. All right, so the next thing we're going to do after that, let's go ahead and fill up the tomato paste can just to the rim with just water. Doesn't matter if it's hot or cold. And then we're going to go ahead and dump that into the tomato paste. You want to fill that with water? Chef Jazz, I love your uh, picture above your sink. <laughs> thank you, thank you. All right, so we have our water that we're dumping in there. Okay. Just set your can to the side. Next, we're gonna grab our brown sugar. I don't know if you all are using brown sugar or the maple syrup, so whichever one that you have. We only need one third cup of that. You wanna grab this measuring cup right there? Mm -hmm. And of course, as I said, things get a little messy sometimes, so I just like to keep everything looking nice and neat. So we're going to take our one third measuring cup and we're going to fill that to the rim. Oh, we need a little bit more. And if anybody has any questions while this is going on, they can either use the chat and I will be watching for questions or they can unmute themselves and ask their question. So while you're measuring out the brown sugar, you just want to take it 
and flatten it here right up, up to the rim. And then we're gonna dump that into the tomato paste. You wanna do that? Mm -hmm. All right, and then after that, we're gonna grab our apple cider vinegar and we're gonna measure that to one third. So just one third cup of the apple cider vinegar. And then and we're just going to add that. What does the apple cider vinegar add to the sauce mixture? The acid. Okay. So just a little bit of acid, putting that with the sweetness of the brown sugar. It's just such a wonderful combination. Okay, we have one request to go just a tiny bit slower. Apologies. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Okay. So I'll just give you a second to catch up. So of course, the first thing we did was to put the tomato paste in the saucepan. We filled up the tomato paste can with just water. We added that to the saucepan. And then the last thing we did was measure out the brown sugar or maple syrup, and we're adding that to the saucepan. Great. That looks good. So what? Um, I'm let's sorry. See. Can everybody give me a thumbs up if you're ready to move on? Okay, we get some thumbs up if you're ready to move on. Okay, we have a couple thumbs up. Uh, Lakeisha, how are you guys doing? Good, okay, we're ready to move on. All right, perfect. So if everyone has your seasonings, the paprika, the onion powder, and the garlic salt, we're gonna start with two tablespoons of the paprika. That's just this here. You wanna dump that in there? Mm -hmm. Perfect. I know you guys probably need an extra second just to measure that out. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is one teaspoon of onion powder. Is it okay if I didn't have onion powder? I only had the, I don't know, I think there were like min, min, minced onions maybe. Is that okay too? Yeah, absolutely. You can use the minced onions, the onion powder. They also have onion salt. And then it's completely fine if you just need to or want to omit it completely. Okay. So one last thing is the garlic salt, one teaspoon of the garlic salt. And as I mentioned in one of the videos that I posted, I just love, love, love spicy food. So I'm just gonna add one teaspoon of the green chalua. You do not have to add any hot sauce. And you're adding how much of that you said? I'm adding one tablespoon. Okay, a tablespoon. Yeah, you do like it hot. <laughs> <laughs> so just a little bit of that. Is everyone ready to put their sauce on the stove? Okay. Give us a thumbs up if you're ready to put your sauce on the stove. Who's ready? Are you good? We have a couple of, everyone's looking good. Okay. Go All right. We have, um, we have a bunch of, oh, hold on one second. Diane needs a minute. I'm going to unmute okay. her. Okay. Okay. Mom, we, go ahead. <laughs> were we supposed to put the one cup of water in with the sauce? Um, Jazz, the, a question about the, the water. She wanted to know how to add the water. Yes, you do oh, add the, the six thing. ounces of okay. water to the sauce. So just Thanks. your six ounce can of tomato paste, just fill that up. Hey, cause I had this, I had this. Can you see this? It's a, uh, oh, oh, she had the squeezable tomato paste. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's absolutely fine. So, okay, good. We're just going Perfect. to fill up the measuring cup to three quarters here. And that's the same as six ounces. Okay. Okay. So Diane, that would be three quarters of a cup of water and then six ounces of tomato paste or close to that. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm going to mute you again. Okay. <laughs> okay. We're ready to move on. All right, so if everyone is ready to move on, we're just gonna take our sauce. We're gonna walk it over to the stove over here. And of course, you can go ahead and just give it a small little stir. I'm just gonna put it on three because we're practically gonna let this cook the entire time that we're cutting our veggies and while our veggies are cooking. 
So we're just going to leave it on low. It shouldn't start bubbling or anything like that. And it's just going to make the, hell, the house smell so amazing. So of course, as this starts to heat up, all the seasonings will actually start to dissolve into the tomato paste and the water. So back over here. Is everyone ready? Ready to move on to cutting our veggies? Okay, like we got thumbs up. Okay, thumbs up. Yep, okay, I'm looking. It looks like we're good. All right, perfect. So right before we go into cutting and sauteing our veggies, let's preheat our oven to 400 degrees. Okay, 400. I'll put that in the notes as well. All right. All right. And so once you start to preheat your oven, you want to grab you out a saute pan. I'm going to go ahead and set my pan to low so it's heating while we're cutting our veggies so it'll be ready. I'll add the oil right before we start sauteing. So, of course, we need to wash our veggies, right? So let's wash our veggies. So you always add your, you heat your pan first and then yes. add your oil, okay. Yes, yes. Okay. So we're just washing off our veggies. Everyone knows to always wash your veggies. Yes, it looks like everybody's working on washing their veggies, so looking good. All right, guys, so cutting the bell pepper may be a little difficult. I'm going to give you all a demo on this red pepper. Parents, you may really want to help the kids with the knife. So the way I like to do this is I set the bell pepper right here in front of it. And I feel like if you look at it, you can almost make a square out of the top of it. That makes sense, right? You can see the square here. Mm -hmm. So what I like to do is I'm going to start. You're going to start right here. See this right here? I'm going to start on the right side and I'm just going to bring the knife right down. So you want to hold your knife straight. Let's hold the knife straight like this. And we want to go straight down, straight down the side. Okay. All right. So that was simple enough. So then we're just going to turn it. You sh yours should look just like this here. So turn yours like this, just like I turned mine. Okay. And then next, you can see where we're cutting it at. We're going to make sure that we cut along this membrane on the inside there. So we're pretty much doing the same thing straight down. Perfect. That's perfect. Amazing. So, and we're just going to continue to do that for each side. So just please be careful. Watch your fingers straight down. Perfect. So let me do mine. We're going to go straight down just like that. And we have one last side. Let's wait. Again, let's make sure we're watching our fingers. So we just want to go straight down on the side, just like that. So by the time you're done with your bell pepper, it should look just like this. That's perfect, right? Mm -hmm. And we can actually set this aside. We will not need this. So from there, you can take your measuring cup so you don't have to step away. And if you need to, let's just tap this tap to get any seeds that may be left in there. So what I like to do, now I'm going to go through and I'm going to cut the membrane out. You always want to cut away from you. So you want to do that there. Parents, that might be something that you want to do for the kids. Do you think you can handle that faster? So let's, let's cut away from us. So let's hold it like that. You cut it this way. That's easy enough, right? Watch your fingers, okay? So that's all we're cutting out. You think you can do that one? So just slide it through just like that. There you go. Watch your fingers up there at the top. Perfect. And because she did cut off a little bit too much, we we'll just go through cut what we actually need, get rid of the rest of it. So now, from there, you're just gonna start to cut the pepper into little thin slices. So you're just gonna do this here. That's easy enough, right? You think you can handle that? All right, let them let you see, let them see you do it. 
And Chef Jazz, as she's doing that, what is the reason to cut the membrane out? Is it for looks? I just don't like the flavor of it. Okay. So that is my reason for cutting it out. Okay. Now these pieces, uh, these slices of bell peppers can be any size you like. So if you all want to go a little bit larger than what we're doing here, which this is what we're looking like. That's perfect. That's perfect. That's completely fine. So I'm going to help her cut some of the bell peppers. You got it? Perfect. Okay. There's you another one. I'm going to cut this one for you. There's no need to rush, everyone. Just take your time. And what's perfect, the difference perfect. between the different colors? I know you had mentioned that to me at one point, um, that there's a different flavor to the different color peppers. So for the different color peppers, the yellow ones are more of like the citrus flavor once you start to cook those. And then with the orange ones, they're more of a sweeter flavor. So I love it. I love both of them. Cool. So this is what our peppers look like here. We still have one more pepper. We're gonna do the same thing to the yellow pepper. Do you remember how to do it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, and then just turn it to the side, right down. Watch your fingers, watch your fingers. There you go. Just straight down like that. Perfect. Just like that. You want to cut those into slices? Mm -hmm. All right. And how is everyone doing out there with their slicing? Give me a thumbs up of how you're doing. Good. Okay. Good. Looks like everyone's doing well out there. There you go. All right, so we're almost done cutting up all of our peppers. No, just slice it. Slice this one. So right when we finish slicing all of our peppers, we're just gonna go over, put eyes on our sauce, give it a quick stir, make sure it's looking and smelling delicious. Perfect, perfect. Perfect. So we're just going to let these sit right here on the side until we actually need those. We're going to check our sauce, everyone. So it might be at a very low simmer. This is currently what ours is doing right there. So it's looking pretty good. Oh, man, can you smell it? It smells so good. <sighs> All right, so now back over here to our cutting board. I'm just going to take a second to throw a couple of things away. You all can take a second to straighten up, get rid of anything that you no longer need. That's a great tip, Chef Jazz, because in our cooking classes, we talk a lot about making sure we keep our workspace neat and clean. What's the reason that it's good to keep your workspace neat and clean? It just keeps you organized. Like, I, I think that's the number one thing. You keep it clean, it's just easy to flow right into the next thing. You know where everything is. You're cleaning as you go, so you have very minimum, minimum cleaning at the end. So, yeah. Cool. All right, so I'm just changing my gloves. We're going to move right into our broccoli florets. All right. Is everyone ready? Let's see. Give us a thumbs up if you're ready to move on to the broccoli. We got a thumbs up, thumbs up. Okay. All right. It's looking like we're pretty good. I All say right. we're ready. So, so we're going to start with cutting the stems off the broccoli. Usually, depending on how much of that you cut, it just falls into the florets. 
for those that did not, I would just cut more of that off. And then any of the florets we can cut into halves. And if they're large, we just cut those into quarters. Did everyone see that? Give so this is about the size that we're looking for right here. Okay, that looks good. Okay, do, is Katie, do you have a question? I'm gonna unmute you if you have you a question. Right now. Okay. Okay, um, we've got Savannah showing her broccoli. Looking good, you guys. All right, perfect. You can throw those pieces in there whenever you're ready. And the last thing that we're gonna have to cut is the red onion. Parents, they really may need some assistance with this one. So I already have my onion cut in half. So just cut the onion in half. Go ahead and cut the top of the onion and the bottom of the onion off. So this is me just cutting the end of the onion off there, just like that. This is my half onion. Can we make sure that we take that first layer of that skin off, please? And right before we get into cutting our onion, if we're all ready, we're gonna check our sauce one more time. You all should really be able to smell your sauce now. Mm. How's your sauce looking, everyone? Good? Thumbs up for good? Okay. All right, we've got a bunch of thumbs up. All right. <laughs> all right, so I'm setting my temperature all the way to low right now. Remember, I started about three. I'm turning it all the way down. So we have our half an onion. We're just gonna cut this into slices. I'm gonna turn it to the side, just like this here, or in your case, I guess, like this here. And I'm just gonna start like this, just straight down. That first piece isn't really gonna be a slice, so we could do away with it, use it for something else. But then the ones followed by that, you should definitely start to get your slices. That's pretty easy, right? Do you have any tips for not crying? <laughs> <laughs> I would say seven years of experience should do it. I have to admit, there are times that I still cry, so. <laughs> so yes. So once you get to a point where it's like your onion is like a bit smaller, just go ahead and flip it just like that. So it's pretty much how we start it. And we're gonna do the same thing there. You do not have to use the entire half of onion. So now we have our onion slices. If everyone is ready, remember that pan that we put on low, our saute pan? We're gonna check and see how hot that is. Turn it up just a little bit if you need to. I would say we're just gonna add about a teaspoon or so of oil, olive oil, not too much. You want to give it a quick swirl. Has everyone made it to this part? Thumbs up, please. Okay, let me check the thumbs up. Are we okay? We've got two thumbs up, three, four, five. Okay, we are good to go. All right, perfect. So let's start sauteing our veggies. We're gonna throw our bell peppers in there, all the bell peppers. Perfect. I'm gonna throw our broccoli in there. I'm only gonna do about half of the onions that we cut. We're gonna throw those in there. Look at all those colors, woo! It's like a rainbow. Yes, it is. Now for me, what I like to do, I think I just wanna take one more teaspoon or so of the oil, pour it on the veggies. Does everyone have their spatula or spoon or whatever it is that they need to stir their veggies? So we're just going to let those cook for a little bit. Okay. So at this point, we are done 
cutting everything. We no longer need our knives, we no longer need our cutting boards. So we're just gonna put those things away. Everyone's looking good. They're all, it looks like everybody's sauteing and it's looking good out there. <laughs> all right, perfect. And of course, take this time to wipe down your station. All right, everyone. Now the fun part. How's your veggies looking? Can you hear the sizzle? Ours is looking pretty good. Just gonna give those a flip. I know you guys probably need a spatula or something of some sort. So while you're over there with your veggies, just grab your salt and pepper. You just want to give those a little bit of some season. For me, I don't put a portion amount on salt and pepper because it's like a to taste type thing. So my salt level, of course, may be a lot different than your salt level. So just do that to your liking. And you can always add more salt, but you can't take it out, right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so a little bit of fresh black pepper. Oh yeah, baby. All right. So at this point, we now want to grab our pizza pan with our pizza dough. We have that here. All right. So I'm not sure where you all picked up your pizza crust from. I grabbed mine from the bakery section at Publix. Oh, before we take this out of the packet, let's grab our parchment paper and let's go ahead and line our pizza pan with that. Why do you like to use parchment paper? I use the parchment paper so that the pizza or whatever I'm cooking at the time does not stick to the pan. As you've seen, I sprayed the pizza pan with Pam cooking spray. And then I'm putting the parchment on top of there. Make sure it sticks a little bit. Now we're going to remove our pie crust from our little packet. It's okay if it doesn't stay perfect. So, you know, guys, let's see if I can do this. You know how you go to Pizza Hut or something and you see them talking? <laughs> Let's hope that I do not drop this cherry boy. You see them tossing the pizza up in the air. I only do it like one or two times. I don't want to test my luck. So let's see. Oh! <laughs> Yay! You got it! <laughs> so that's how I'm going to do it. Of course, you guys don't have to do it that way. You can just start with putting your pizza crust onto the pan. Just take your fingertips and just pull it out to the edges. You see, as I was tossing mine, it kind of got a little longer than the pan, but that's, that's fine. That's no big deal. Okay, so I've got one coming? question from Lakeisha. What's your question? You're unmuted. Okay, so we went to Publix and they didn't have the pressed dough, they had the fresh dough. Okay. Yeah, that's what this is. Okay. So, so they so they need to roll theirs out though because it's still in the packaging and I know a few other people did that too. So what do you suggest for them to kind of get caught up, get their pan prepped? So what's your pizza dough look like, guys? Does it look like this? Yes. Yep. Yeah, that's what it looks like? Yeah. Okay. All right. Does everyone have flour and a rolling pin? Does everybody have flour? Let's grab out a little flour. Yep. I know some people have, um, like, I know Diane is using non bread. I think um, Kim and Ivy are using some kind of a pre made crust. Yep, it's, it looks almost like non bread or something. So I think some people have, like, that kind of thing, but other people have the actual ball of dough. Okay, somebody has an Udi's pizza. Okay, Angela, I see you. So everybody's got something a little different, but that's kind of cool because then we know this can work with really almost anything. Yes, almost anything. So for those that look like this, as you've seen, I took a little bit of flour and I spread it on the counter. This prevents it from sticking once we start to roll it out. 
Okay, hold on. I have my rolling pin. I'm just going to add a little more flour to the top of the dough and to my rolling pin. And Don, what's the, the flour for? Just for Ivy. It just um, keeps it from sticking. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. the flour keeps it from sticking. Okay. Curious. Like for example, the dough will not stick to the counter, nor will it stick to the rolling pin. So it'll make it fairly easy to pull up so we can then add it to our pizza pan. So if we have our rolling pin, this is all we're going to do right here. You might have to put a little elbow in there, turn it a little bit. I'm just going to keep rolling it out. Hey, don't forget about your veggies. I've turned mine down to low because they're practically ready. How's the rolling coming, everyone? Would you like to try the rolling? Yeah, you try it. Go yeah, ahead. Let me see how rolling is going. Okay, we've got some rolling out there. Looking Perfect. Good. <laughs> Looking good. There you go. Keep going. Very nice. got to pick it up. I'm just going to pull it just a little bit. I always have that problem, Chef Jazz, with the dough, like when I get it refrigerated like that, where I have to roll it out. I can never get it in a perfect circle. <laughs> and sometimes oh, it breaks. Fine. What do you do if it breaks? What do you do if it breaks? What do I do for breaks? If the dough breaks. Oh, if the dough breaks while we're rolling it out like this? Yeah. Uh, so if there was a crack in it like there, oh. I would just like pinch it back together, just like this here. Okay. As you see, it's gonna take a minute, but in between the rolling and everything else, it'll be fine. We wanna check our sauce, and I'm gonna mm -hmm. continue rolling this out. Give it a quick stir. You wanna get her stirring the sauce. How does it smell, Michaela? Good. <laughs> so I'm still just rolling out the dough. This it is does a little, take a minute. little bit harder. Yeah. yeah, it does. It's a good workout. Let's see, Let's see if my throwing techniques, our hole is still in here. Let's pinch it up a little bit more. All right, let's see if the, <laughs> the Thompson technique still works after this. Up, oh, up, oh, up. Oh. We'll work it out here in a minute. We're getting there, we're getting there. Huh? Yeah, that's good, that's perfect. That looks good. Hey guys, you wanna take a second to give your sauce a taste to see if all the flavors is to your liking? Just grab you a tasting spoon. Oh my gosh. I hope you guys taste just like that. That's delightful. Yeah, Caleb, you gotta try it. You have to try it. Go ahead. What do you think? Look at the camera. This is good. 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 We're getting thumbs up, Chef Jazz. All right, thumbs up for our pizza. Yep, thumbs up on I the sauce. Sure. Thumbs up on the sauce, perfect. I think I'm almost done with this pizza dough. So it's no longer gonna be perfect like it was the first time, which is completely fine. So just roll, 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 roll. Okay, turn it a little bit more. Gonna do the same thing. How's the rolling coming? It is taking a minute, but we'll get there. Okay, I'm gonna check on everybody. 
Looks like everyone's, uh, we've got a few people still rolling and then a few people just watching. Okay. So the, for the people that's just watching, how are your veggies? This is what your veggies should look like. They shouldn't be like too limp or anything. They still have like a nice bite to it. Very crunchy, delightful. Okay, I'm looking to see, everyone's checking their veggies. Okay, we've got Lakeisha's got her pizza rolled out. It looks good to me. Her dough's rolled Perfect. out. Yep, that looks good, you guys. So everyone's ready, okay. so we just go with it. So now, we're we'll fixing. We still have a minor hole in ours. So now we're just laying it back onto the pan. So I just took that hole and I just folded the dough over it. So now the fun part, you want to grab the sauce for us? You got it? Okay. We're going to clean up our flour mess here in just a second. So the sauce is absolutely amazing, everyone. So at this point, we can just set this to the side. We're going to take our sauce, spoonful of our sauce, right there, dab in the middle. Okay? Then we're just going to take it and smear it all around the pizza. Make sure you leave the crust, the edges out for the crust. So, yep. Yeah. After we finish putting our plant-based barbecue sauce on our pizza crust. We're going to grab our spring mix or arugula spinach. I decided on a spring, on a arugula and spinach mix. So that's what we're having. So that's about how much sauce we use there. You guys have sauce left over. You guys put this on pizza. I would say it's good on steak. More <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I was not supposed to say steak for the plant based plate. You we, guys can put this on veggies. We're good with every type of eating. Our focus is just learn to cook, love your veggies. So that's cool, too. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So we grabbed a handful of our veggies, of our, our mixture, and we're just going to put that right on the pizza. So, not too much. I would say, like, a couple of handfuls should be plenty. Of course, you can put as much or as little as you like. So that's what our pizza looks like so far. And if people wanted to add cheese, would they add it just on the very top of everything? Or would they add, because I know my daughter, like, she's allergic to dairy. So I would have to do, like, a non-dairy cheese. But um, so, so with adding the cheese, I would wait until the pizza is about... 90% done oh. in the oven. So okay. I will let this bake a bit. That was just the way it is. <laughs> <laughs> so here's us. Here we are adding our uh, veggies. You can add all the veggies. You can add half of the veggies. Oh, let's turn this off. So yeah, that's what we're looking like so far. As a chef, I love to season everything. So I'm gonna pull out my pepper, my salt, give it a quick this. Do the same thing with the salt. Okay. Now, does everyone have a root uh, oregano? Does everybody so have their oregano? It. Give us a thumbs up if you've got it. Some oregano. Okay, we're, we're getting some thumbs up here. All right, I think so everybody's we're add some plating right now. Like they're plating, or they're, um, I'm sorry, putting their veggies on their pizza. Okay, all right. So we'll give them just a second. We'll clean up this flour while they finish doing that. So this, again, this is what our pizza looks like. Make sure you left the edges out so that we can have that as the crust. That is what we are using the oregano and the oil for. We're just going to dust the crust with that. So I'm just cleaning up my mess. And 
And the pizza should only take about 20, 25 minutes or so. I understand that everyone may have different sizes. So of course the cooking time may vary just a little. All right, we're all neat and clean again. It looks right. like we're ready to move on. It looks like everyone's got their veggies on and their sauce on. Okay. So I'm gonna rinse out my tablespoons, my measuring spoons, because I need those. Give those a quick dry. And I'm just gonna add a couple of tablespoons of this oil to the oregano. Coffee, too much coffee. Parents, you understand that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is what we're looking like so far. We have our oil and our oregano together. I'm just gonna take a small spoon, give that a quick stir just like that, guys. Oh my gosh, the pizza is gonna be amazing. I feel like the sauce is what makes this pizza, guys. I hope you all agree with me. You know, parents, once this is over, you guys have to go to Instagram or Facebook. Post pictures of your pit, of your kids with the pizza. I would love to see those, and I would absolutely provide feedback. So back to the oregano and the oil. We have a brush, but you can also use a spoon. Michaela, I'm actually going to get you to do this. So what we're doing here is we're just going to dip our brush or spoon into our mixture, and we're just gonna go around the edges, just like that. Easy enough, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Lakeisha, we've got one question. I'm unmuting you. Okay, so we thought we had oregano. We've got everything but. We've got sage, thyme, parsley. Are any so, of those, sub can we substitute any of those? No, that's absolutely fine. Me personally, if that was all I, I had, I would take a pinch of this, pinch of this, pinch of this, put it in a small bowl, do the same thing with the oil, mix all of those. More flavor, right? Okay. <laughs> Let's do it. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So, yes, just like that. I'm sorry. So, kind of like you're painting a picture. Mm -hmm. There you go. That's just... Could you say yeah. the whole pizza? I'm sorry? Could you say that again? I'm sorry, did you say just the whole pizza for the oregano oil mix? Just the crust, um, Kim. Okay. You're, you were cutting out a little bit when you were asking the question, but I'm yeah. thinking you were just asking, you just do the That's crust perfect. with the oregano and oil. Yeah. That's amazing. Are you excited? Are you excited about our creation? Yes. All right. So guys, how's your pizza look? Are you ready to put it in the oven? Okay, I'm gonna <laughs> check out everybody. Give me a thumbs up if you guys are ready to put it in the oven. Okay, one, two, three. Yep, looking good. I think Lakeisha, you guys might be running a tiny bit behind, but I think everybody else is pretty much ready to go. Savannah might be just finishing up her crust. <laughs> So our pizza is in the oven. I'm going to set a timer for 20 minutes. Hey Siri, set timer for 20 minutes. All right. So I know people may be a little hungry. You might need a little snack. So this is what you do. Wait for it. Grab yourself a bowl. And if you did not put all the veggies on your pizza, here you go. There's your snack. That's a good tip, Chef Jazz. I like that one. Snack on your veggies. Take your gloves off. Yes. I love it. So we're going to wipe up our space. We're going to put away everything that we're not using. The leftover sauce that we have, we're just going to put that into a Tupperware container. And we're just gonna place that in the fridge. This sauce is good for five days, so you have plenty of time to use it. Once we finish cleaning up everything, we're gonna grab our paper and start our froggy origamis. 
Can you also freeze the leftover sauce as well? Absolutely. You can even freeze the pizza. So sometimes I cook the pizza and then I just like freeze whatever we don't eat and just save it for lunch another week or later on in the week. Cool. So I go through the whole process of heating it back up in the oven. How's the veggies? Okay. All right. Does anyone have any questions or any questions just for me? It doesn't have to have anything to do with what we're cooking. Ask away. Let's see if we've got any. Um, okay, let me see. I think we might have one question. Okay, do you have a question? Who has a question? Okay, go ahead. How long have you been a chef for? How long have I been a chef? Well, I graduated culinary school in 2012. So professionally, I've been cooking for eight years. Oh, okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. So, Chef Jazz, what is your favorite food? My favorite food? That's so hard to just pick one favorite food. I <laughs> love everything. I think it would be easier to ask me what is my least favorite food. My least favorite food is, oh, snails. So, I'm not <laughs> sure how you guys, escargot. So I'm not sure how you feel about eating snail, but that's my least favorite thing. <laughs> yes, I've tried snail before. <laughs> yes. We have a question. Okay. How many times have you guys been cooking? Well, this is my first virtual online cooking class, my very first one. Uh, as Don mentioned, I did do a cooking segment for First Coast News. And then like when I lived in Charleston a few years ago, I used to do small cooking classes for the kids there. Ooh, so I like, I like cooking too because um, I cook with my papa and make pancakes. Oh my gosh, pancakes. I love, love, love pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> More questions, I'm loving it. What made you wanna become a chef? What made me want to become a chef? Oh my gosh. So when I was younger, we used to go to my Nana's house every weekend. And of course, you know, Nana, she cooks these large meals. So it was large Southern meal. So you had your mac and cheese, your sweet potato yams. You had your deviled eggs, fried chicken, chitlins. I know many people don't eat chitlins and fat back. And so it was just like every single week, I was like, man, I can't wait to the weekend. I want to go to Nana's house so I can eat. And so I would say that's where my love for cooking came from. And then when I was in the sixth grade, I had a project and it was like either write an entire paper about a food dish or actually prepare the food dish. So I went home and I talked to my dad and of course we both came up with preparing the food dish. So we did a French coconut pie, absolutely amazing. And like, I guess the cooking with my dad and in between eating all of Nana's good food, I guess that's where my love for cooking came from. Hmm. Can I ask a question? Oh, and um, what is your favorite recipe? My favorite recipe, I would have to go with my grandmother's recipe. It's called Actually, it's on my menu as a private chef. I call it Granny's Egg Custard Pie. And it's just, of course, it's a dessert. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. There's actually pictures of Granny's Egg Custard Pie on my Instagram and Facebook. It's all decorated with berries and a coolie. It just looks good. Custard pie. Yummy. So, guys, I'm just putting away things whenever I step out of the frame of the camera. Again, it just helps with cleaning up at the very end. What was the most exciting event that you worked? Because you did all these different things like Garth Brooks and the Players Championship and the Masters. And what was the most exciting event? The most exciting event? Oh, man. That's a, that's a hard one. The most exciting event. Most exciting. 
I don't know. I, I guess I could go with the air shows. I did my very first air show in Beaufort, South Carolina. For me personally, that was, I think that was three years ago when I did my very first air show. I had only seen those planes on TV. Like I had never seen them. I mean, of course I've seen them in the distance, but I had never attended an air show. And I just think being there around all the people that fly the helicopters and the planes, I think that was that had to be the coolest event. The event that I love the most, that has to be the Masters. The golf course is absolutely gorgeous. It's like, it's almost like you're looking into just a picture. It's just, it's just hard to believe everything is perfect. It's literally jaw dropping gorgeous. So yeah. But no, then there was this, uh, I did this concert up in Delaware. That was, that was amazing. There was about 12 different artists and we actually got to see the artists like stand in front of the stage while they were doing the concert. So I think that was pretty cool. It's kind of hard to just pick one. <laughs> I bet. Yeah. <laughs> Any more? Let's see, my least favorite event? What would be my least favorite? No comment on my least favorite event. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever had a recipe that you, um, that didn't turn out like you hoped? How did you feel about that? Because sometimes I think kids get frustrated if something doesn't turn out and, you know, how do you, what do you do if something doesn't turn out exactly as you had planned? You just got to keep rolling with the punches. Everything isn't always going to turn out the way that you planned better yet. I can tell you, I, I'll give you two. It was when I first started doing my private chef gigs and like I had made the grains egg custard pie a thousand times, guys, a thousand times. For whatever reason, I did everything the exact same way. It rose like a cake. It had never rose like a cake before. And it's so like the top of it looked like a muffin. And I'm like, oh my God, why does it look like this? So like, what am I gonna do now? And so of course, once it cooled down, the entire top muffin part just fell in. And I'm just like halfway freaking out to be honest, because again, this had never happened. But I covered, I covered it up with some berries. I made a simple syrup to go on top of that, garnished it with some mint. And it was beautiful. The taste was still there. It just looked different. And then another one is I do a snickerdoodle cobbler. That was just almost a disaster. But like at that point, it's time for me to send it out. So it's, again, I can't go back and remake it. So I just had to cut pretty much the edges of the dish that I made and serve it that way again like the flavor was there on the edges not so much in the center but you just got to keep rolling with the punches and did you ever do a cooking competition yes i've done a cooking competition i did uh extreme food fights with chef amadeus he's another local celebrity chef here in jacksonville i actually won i beat some older guys that was about 20 years older than me or so. So it felt really good. <laughs> Yay! Won a little trophy and a medal, all of that good stuff. So that was amazing. Cool. And then um, I am a judge for the Taste of Gainesville. If you all haven't heard about the Taste of Gainesville, you all should definitely check it out. They do this Iron Chef competition. It's just like it is on TV, except for like you get to sit there in the live audience. So at the end of you actually get the auction for the dishes. All the money you raise goes to all the charity events. So it's a really, really good cause. Cool. Well, I think if there's no more questions, we can do the origami. Yes, ma'am. I just have a couple more things to put away and we can get started on that. Cool. So everybody just needs to make sure you grab your piece of paper and then she's gonna show us how to, okay, good. I'm seeing a few people have their paper. Good, very good, everybody. I'm gonna grab one too. <laughs> you wanna grab our pieces of paper and our frog origamis from right there? All right, everyone. So are we ready? Yeah. 
or a froggy origami. So <laughs> guys, don't laugh at my frog. He's cute though, right? <laughs> so this is one of them. So he's not the best jumper. It, the, the way that it jumps and the distance that it jumps actually depends on like the type of paper you use and whatnot. So that's how that one jumps. Were you able to see that? Let me do it this way. Do it this way. So it works. He just flips upside down whenever he jumps. But this one jumps a lot better than that one, but not as far, not as high. And he mostly stays on his side versus this one. He just flips upside down. So if you're ready, let's get started. Someone asked if they can put the cheese on the pizza now. Um, let's take a look at our pizza. Let's see what it looks like. Uh, for us, our pizza isn't quite ready. Let me grab a towel. So if we were to put, oops, if we were to put uh, cheese on our pizza, I would still wait a little bit because I'm looking for the crust of the pizza to get just a little bit darker, if that makes sense. Because once you put the cheese on, you're only going to need maybe 60 seconds. Well, I guess it would depend on how much cheese you're actually putting on the pizza, but it only need a couple of minutes to actually melt. That looked really good. <laughs> Thank you. So, which paper would you like? This one. That one? Mm -hmm. All right, guys. So, we have our paper. Everyone have their paper? Yeah. Oh, Lakeisha's look, pizza's looking good. Oh. All right. So, if we're all ready, we're going to start with our paper here. Turn yours this way. Mm -hmm. All right. So, we're going to grab our right hand corner and we're going to fold it just like that. Yep. That's perfect. So, yep, you want to make sure that line is nice, tight, and crisp. Okay. Then you want to open it up. Hold on, hold on. I've only done this a couple times, guys. Let's go ahead and get rid of this piece down here. So, I'm just going to fold this up to where it meets, just like that. If you have scissors, feel free to grab the scissors and go along that line. For those who do not have scissors right close, just flip it over, fold it. Parents, I'm sure you've done this a couple of times. Maybe it's not the most sanitary thing, but we're all human, right? So in case you don't have the scissors, just do that there. And then now we're just we'll gonna pull it. You see I'll how easy that came out? I'll out too, at, after this is over, in case anybody needs the recording, I'll send the recording out after. Okay. But as you've seen, that piece came off fairly easy. In case you missed it, I'm doing it here again. So I just folded that extra piece up. I'm gonna flip this over and fold it back this way, making it a lot easier to cut. I'm gonna put that secret ingredient on there, just like that there. You see how easy it is to tear once you do that? Okay. So now we're going to open this back up. But then we're going to take our bottom right hand corner, this side right here, and we're going to fold it up this way. I'm going to do the same thing. Make sure that line is nice, tight, and crisp. Okay. You got it? All right. So then we're going to open it back up just like that there. And now, I think the teacher instructors instructors call this hot dog style. Is this hot dog or hamburger? Dog. Okay, guys, just fold the paper over like this. Long ways. Long ways. <laughs> so, in case you got lost, we just we opened it back up, and we're just folding it over this way, just like that. You got it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Just trace your lines one more time, guys. Just all the lines. It'll make it really easy here and again. So I'm just going right back over all the lines we just did. So did you go over your lines? You go over all your lines, fold it like this. Fold it back like that. Mm -hmm. and then fold it back like that. And then we're going to open it up. And you see how it looks just like this here, how it's like almost folding by itself. So now we're going to do this. 
You see how those, it just closed like that. I just, I just did that there. The two that's sticking up, I'm just gonna take those apart like that, press those down, and I'm just gonna flatten it. So you see how this is folding right here, like mm -hmm. that? So it's pretty much just doing all the work for you. You just gotta press this part down. Mm -hmm. See, and there we are, okay? I think I lost it on that. I don't know if anyone else did, but. Oh, did you guys lose me? No worries, I'll start from the top. So does everyone have their folds? So both corners like this here. Thumbs up if you have all your folds. Thumbs up if you guys have folds. Okay. Do you have your folds yep. done? I have my folds. Okay. All right. So if everyone's look like this, because like if you hold it like this, you can see this is like more of a pointy part. So you want to be able to hold that part in your hand. Okay. So. I'm just taking it from where the triangle is down here and I'm just folding in the sides like that. Thumbs up on that one. Everyone have thumbs up? Yep, okay, we've got a few thumbs up, okay. Good. Okay, perfect. Yeah. And so from what's sticking up just like that there, you literally just press it down. The lines are already there. Okay. So? Press that down just like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, if we're ready, take the right hand, just the one flat. You'll still be able to see your bottom flat down here. So you're gonna take this one flat and you're gonna fold it up there to that center line. In case you missed it, this one flap on the right hand side, you're leaving this one here on the bottom. You're gonna fold it up just like that. And then we're gonna do the exact same thing to the other side, just like that. Okay, everyone have that? How's everybody so looking? So if you have, thumbs up. Thumbs up. Oh, right, before okay, next, Savannah. The pizza you guys smells are... amazing, so I just wanna check the pizza real quick. Okay, she's checking the pizza real quick. Okay. This would be the perfect time for you guys to put your cheese on the pizza. Okay, so, so time to put the nice cheese on. If you're, gonna, if you're adding it, do it now. Yes, perfect time Can to you add your pizza. the last step again? The last step for the origami or the pizza? Yes, the origami. The origami. For the origami. Okay, the very last step. So I had this flap here. Where you folded the two corners in. You yeah. said, how did I do that there? Yeah. So I just grabbed one of those flaps. Cause you still see this one here on the bottom. Yeah. And I just folded it up just like that. Okay. Just like that to that center line. Okay. Did you get it? Yep. We got a thumbs up. Perfect, okay, so now we're just gonna do the exact same thing to the other side. Take this corner to here, and then this corner to here. Yep, go. right there. Everyone have that? Mm. I think so. Okay, perfect. So now, the first side that we, we uh, fold it, we're gonna grab that piece now. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna fold it again, just like that. You see how I did that? Oh, there goes our timer for our pizza, guys. Those that just put your cheese on, you may just need like an extra minute or so. We'll go ahead and get through this step here before we take the pizza out of the, out of the oven. It'll be just fine. So again, we're grabbing this piece, grab it right here, and we're folding that up to the center line. You see? Just folding it up right there. And of course, yep, that's perfect, just like that. You just wanna make sure that it's nice and crisp, like that there, <coughs> just like that. So now we're gonna do the exact same thing to the other side. So there we go. And that's what we look like right there. 
that's where we will stop at. Once everyone gives me a thumb up, we'll go ahead and take care of our pizza. It looks like people are showing me theirs and it looks good. Okay. Perfect. So everyone's look like this, right? Mine looks like that. I think Ivy's looks like good. Perfect. All right. So everyone, parents, they may need your help with this. We want to grab our side towels because we're going to remove Excuse our pizza me. from the oven. Oh, um, we got one question. You meant like okay. one side? Do you mean like the other side of this? Sure, yeah. Um, like, okay, are you she's supposed looking. To the other side of the, the flaps? Um, Savannah, what we'll do is we'll have her get the pizza out of the oven and then, um, and then sh you want to go back and show her how to do that part after you get the pizza out? Yeah, okay. absolutely. Cause we gotta let the pizza rest a couple of minutes before we can actually cut into it. Ooh. So everyone, we have our side towels. Sorry. What's that? <laughs> Fire alarm in oh. someone's house. Okay. So everyone, we're just removing our pizza from the oven. Look at that, look at that, look at that. Man, so at this point, another reason I like to use the parchment paper on the pizza pan, I can just pull that off, simple, just like that. So now, look at that beauty. Yum. If you did not use all of your, uh, all of your oil and herb mixture, just add some more at the very end just like that guys oh i can't wait to hear all the feedback from the pizza guys so what do you think of your pizza how's your pizza looking can i have some feedback please we're getting thumbs up on pizza good okay yep we got thumbs up oh lakeisha's looking good we got a thumbs up there angela Perfect. Okay, everybody's looking good. Katie, good. Beautiful. All right, so this is our pizza. We're gonna let it rest a couple of minutes, cool off for a couple of minutes. And until then, we'll finish up our origamis real quick. All right, so which step did we need to revisit? So the girl, um, in her video, she had this side folded up this part so she needs to release it okay all right so if you folded anything on this back side just unfold it does that help any this is what your back side should look like then show the front and this is the front okay okay good okay that looks better savannah all right so if everyone is ready from there we are going to flip it over mm -hmm. you got it flipped over yes all right that right hand corner we're going to bring that up to that center line you see right hand corner center line I think I did that right. Hold on, guys. Give me a second. I lost my way. Okay, so if you fold it that last piece, because I said to fold it up this way, I misspoke. Let's unfold it. But we're going to take that same right hand side once you unfold it and fold it this way in instead. I'm so sorry, guys. So you see that same piece and we're just folding it this way. You got you got yours. Yep, that's right. So you just want to make sure you bring it to the center line just like that. Okay. And then we're going to go back and do the exact same thing to the other side. Just like that there. All right, perfect. 
So this is the side that we just finished folding. Show them yours because hers is a lot larger than mine. So this is the side that we just finished folding. Okay, look good. This is the back side. Kim, I see yours. That looks good. Perfect, okay. Diana, I see yours. Good. Okay, so the piece that we just folded, we're gonna fold it again. These are the legs, guys. So this flap here, we're gonna take it and fold it over just like that there until it's on the edge of that other fold. So if you need to see it again, we're just lifting the flap that we just folded and we're folding it over just like that. And then just the same thing to this other side, fold it out just like that. You got yours? Okay. Fold it out like that, fold this out. That's perfect. And I think this part, can you see, can you guys see that it's actually starting to look like a frog? That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And you turn it this way and it's the legs. So I think this part is maybe, at least for me, it was the most challenging part, but it's like also the easiest part because you're just doing more folds. So you see, if you hold it like this, so you're pretty much holding it by his legs, Mm -hmm. you're gonna fold it so as you can see I'm I'm flipping it just like this oh. so you flip yours flip it so hold it like this mm -hmm. flip it like this perfect grab it down here by the legs mm -hmm. and you're gonna fold it like this right here fold it over like yep you got to do one straight line so he'd be able to jump. The folds, these last folds is what helps the frog jump. All right. Okay, you got it? Mm -hmm. And then you're going to do another fold. So you're going to take that, flip it back over, just like that. But you still want to hold that fold. And then you're going to do it like that there. You did not see that? <clears throat> there you go. Ivy, I think you've got it. That looks good. I think that looks okay. good. Okay. So everyone that do have it, we are now flipping them back over. And there's the froggies. And that is what makes it jump. I don't know why I just can't get mine to jump right. <laughs> but look, hers jumps better than mine. But as you can see now, if you have a lot of them, you can do little races. You can make uh, race tracks with chalk in your driveway, and they can see who jumps the farthest or who reaches the finish line first. So yeah. Cool. Oh, thank you, Chef Jazz. That's awesome. And if anyone needs uh, to look at that again, like I said, they'll be getting the the replay. So that was a kind of a fun thing while we're waiting for our people to cook and cool. <laughs> All right, everyone. So at this point, I'm going to grab me a set of gloves so we can cut into our amazing pizza. Yay. <laughs> All right, you ready for some pizza? Pizza, 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 pizza. All right, pizza. I hope you all are ready for this. Did anyone start eating their pizza or cutting their pizza before we got to it? If so, that's just fine. I'm sure parents, you all know how to cut your pizza. I'm just gonna cut it in half. The crust is probably gonna be the hardest part to cut through. It is still a little hot. Just gonna turn it, cut it in half again. Cut those halves in half. And if some of your veggies start to slide off, it's okay guys, just pick them up and put them where they go. Okay, all right. And who wants to try the pizza? Let's see, everyone's cutting the ears. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Tell everyone what you think. 
It's hot. You want to come over here? Mm -hmm. Let me grab me a slice. Ooh, it's hot. Mm. Oh. It's amazing. Mm. <laughs> Guys, this is really good. How's your pizzas turn out, everyone? I, I've got everybody showing us, and I'm getting lots of thumbs ups out there. <laughs> good. Awesome. Very good. It you guys. So I am so thrilled that everyone enjoyed making the pizza. It seems like everyone's pizza turned out amazing. So, any questions? It's good, Mom. Mm -hmm. so listen. Any questions before we go? That was amazing, Chef Jazz. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you giving me this opportunity. Hopefully, we can do it again. Yay! Thank you. Oh, we have one question. Okay, hold on. I'm going to unmute really quick. Go ahead. Oh, wait. Okay. Uh, hold on, baby girl. I'm trying to unmute you. For some reason, I can't. How is it? You like it? Uh, you like I'm trying to unmute all. Right. Okay. Go ahead. I didn't like it. I have a great day. Oh, thank you. You have a great you. day, too. Thank you. Thank you so much. We loved watching how you chopped your veggies, too. Those, those were all good tips on how to chop the veggies right in the proper way. Perfect. So glad you all enjoyed it. So, so glad. What's your hash? What is your um, Instagram again? My Instagram is Chef Jazz. Jazz with just one Z. Okay. And one two. So Chef Jazz one two. Mm. Chef Jazz. Yes. All right. Well, thank you once again. That was amazing. And we really appreciate you taking the time to show us how it's really done as our very first celebrity chef. So, oh my gosh, thank you so much. Yay. Absolutely. Can we give her hand? Everyone, enjoy your pizza and I will see yeah. you the next thank time. You. Thank you. Bye. Thank Bye. you, guys.